These are the top skills to learn in cybersecurity in the age of AI. Now with all the buzz in the recent months around generative AI, I wanted to make this video to cover the skills that I think will still be relevant and that employers will still be hiring for, even with the new advances made in artificial intelligence. So let's get right into it. Number one on this list is threat intelligence. Threat intelligence is a crucial part of cybersecurity that involves gathering and analyzing information about potential risks and threats to an organization's computer systems, hardware, software, networks, data, and people. A threat intelligence team can help proactively mitigate against security breaches and vulnerability. With threat intelligence, you're gathering information from various different sources, including OSINT tools or open source intelligence tools, dark web monitoring, third-party security vendors, government advisories, as well as other security communities and groups that you're a part of that are relevant to your organization. For example, when a vulnerability or an attack is specifically targeted in any specific sector in cybersecurity, like finance, government, healthcare, etc., the primary goal of threat intelligence is to enable organizations to make sure that senior leadership and teams are able to make informed decisions to prevent or mitigate cyber attacks. You can also provide information about the tactics and techniques that attackers are using to target your specific sector. In the three pillars of their intelligence, this includes strategic intelligence, operational intelligence, and tactical intelligence. So while there are many tools out there that help automate the process of collecting information, gathering data into one consolidated place for threat intelligence analysts to be able to keep track of, this is most definitely an area of cybersecurity that will still need skilled cybersecurity professionals to do the job. For example, let's say your organization is in finance and there are other actors specifically targeting certain organizations in your sector. You may be part of a larger organization for threat intelligence where other organizations in your sector are getting together and sharing information about what they're seeing, any specific indicators of compromise, when their attack started, and as much as they can share without giving away too much sensitive information about their organization. You'll see this very often in bigger sectors, especially where they hold very sensitive information, which typically happen to be around healthcare information, financial information, and other similar sensitive data. This isn't necessarily something that you can automate, especially when you're working cross-collaboratively across organizations. And threat intelligence teams come up with the tactics and solutions for an organization to stay secure against external threats and may warn them in advance of risks that may be coming their way. You can level up your cybersecurity skills with cybersecurity courses on Udemy, who is the sponsor of today's video. This is one of the most important times to learn new skill sets so that you're able to keep a competitive edge if you're in the job market or even just keeping up with cybersecurity trends. Udemy is an online learning platform that offers a wide range of courses on various topics including cybersecurity. They have an extensive course collection with a diverse range of courses covering ethical hacking, penetration testing, and network security so you can be sure that you'll find a course that covers the specific topic of cybersecurity that you're trying to get into. Udemy courses are also designed to be flexible so you have lifetime access to course materials allowing you to learn at your own pace and revisit the content whenever you need. You can access the course from any device, whether it be your laptop, your tablet, or your mobile device, as well as the fact that Udemy offers cybersecurity courses at very affordable prices, providing you access to high quality courses at a very reasonable cost. The instructors of Udemy cybersecurity courses are typically subject matter experts in their field and have years and decades of experience. Udemy also provides a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk at all to try out any of their courses. So before enrolling in a course, you can review your instructor's profiles. And from my experience, Udemy courses always provide a very engaging learning experience with a combination of video lectures, quizzes and assignments, as well as downloadable resources so you're able to learn faster and more effectively with an interactive learning environment. Most of the highly rated cybersecurity courses that I recommend on Udemy are around $100 or less that can teach you the skills to get into your next job in cybersecurity. You can check out the Udemy cybersecurity courses that I personally recommend linked in my description below. Thank you to Udemy for sponsoring today's video. Next up is cloud security. Because of the growing adoption of cloud computing platforms in small and large organizations, since a lot of organizations are moving away from having their own on-prem data centers because they are typically very expensive and very hard to maintain, being able to get some hands-on experience using a cloud platform is going to be beneficial in your career since most companies are heading towards that direction. By learning cloud security, you'll gain the knowledge and skills necessary to protect and secure cloud environments effectively. And because organizations are still making that switch from on-prem data centers, whether it's a public cloud, a hybrid cloud, or even building their own private cloud, the details and nuances around securing the data, the applications, the users, everything that lives in that cloud environment 
is still something that organizations are figuring out and working through and that is why cloud security i think is going to be very big in the upcoming years with more organizations focusing on hiring cloud security engineers cloud security architects cloud environments also come with unique security challenges compared to typical on-prem systems since your company's data is living in another company's data center and there's a shared responsibility around virtualization disaster recovery upkeep scalability as well as the fact that there are different cloud service models like IaaS, SaaS, and PaaS, in which case these specific security risks and settings will differ depending on the service model that your company is using. Another thing to consider is specifically privacy in the cloud. For example, if your company is undergoing specific audits, if they have certain regulations that they have to follow, because there's typically going to be some sensitive data, some customer data or personal data stored on the cloud, making sure that you understand the necessary security measures that are taken to protect your data, like encryption at rest, encryption in transit, data loss prevention, who is able to access that information, all of your disaster recovery and business continuity planning. All this is intertwined and goes back to how secure that you actually are within the cloud. And these are definitely very large scale problems that organizations are facing today. And not to mention everything around the visibility into your applications in the cloud, what kind of alerting you're getting, what kind of logging you have access to, who's able to pull and view those logs. So if you're watching this video, you're likely someone who is looking to gain some new skill sets in cybersecurity. The next skill set I recommend learning in the age of AI is governance, risk compliance, and auditing. I know this isn't necessarily the most exciting area in cybersecurity, but it is one of the most important. For example, if you're a software company and you're trying to sell a B2B product, your customers are typically going to want to know whether or not you're going to be trustworthy enough to store their information. And oftentimes it's not just going to be a, we'll take your word for it. And they require some kind of external audit report by a third party vendor. This is where all things auditing and compliance comes in. For example, your customers may want you to provide a SOC 2 report or various other audit reports or certifications, depending on what sector your customers want. And while this may not seem that important, if you think about the fact that a majority of your customers will need some kind of validation that you're doing what you say you're doing with how you store information, your disaster recovery plans, your encryption methods, how you protect your organization, do you have a dedicated cybersecurity team, etc. If you're able to provide them that evidence that is typically going to be in the form of a third party audit, then that is what is going to be the bottom line in terms of driving sales for your organization, which also impacts the bottom line of your company's profitability. So while this isn't the most exciting part of cybersecurity, it is one of the most important because it directly impacts your marketing, your sales teams, your legal teams, everything that has to do with the customer acquisition side of things. And now aside from making profit, another important thing is the fact that external audits typically will also allow you to find gaps and holes in your cybersecurity program and enables you to identify, assess, and manage those risks and vulnerabilities effectively. This may also be required based on other regulatory requirements that you need to follow. For example, if you have customers, clients, or employee data that are subject to GDRP requirements, then your organization must be adhering to those requirements to stay compliant. So for those of you who are interested in going into an area in GRC, while your roles may not be as technical as being on the red team or the blue team, you are going to be managing cross collaborative efforts to lead audits, which may happen multiple times per year, depending on the sector that you're in and how many audits and certifications that your company undergoes, which also depends on the sector that your organization is in. This includes things like gathering evidence, managing stakeholder communications, essentially being a project manager for a specific audit or multiple audits, and ensuring that tasks are being completed on both sides from the external auditor as well as your internal teams. Next up is ethical hacking. So this is specifically for those of you who may be interested in going into the red team or offensive security. Your goal will be to conduct security assessments on an application or an asset and be able to find and target specific vulnerabilities on that target and be able to provide that feedback with suggestions back to the development team to be able to remediate or mitigate those findings. In a nutshell, your job is essentially to find the bugs and vulnerabilities and risk before the bad actors actually do. This in turn helps make your organization a safer place so that external attackers aren't able to exploit vulnerabilities found in your environment, whether it be hardware, software, firmware, or network vulnerabilities to proactively minimize the risk of unauthorized access, data breaches, and other security incidents. Ethical hacking also helps identify any gaps in security controls and configurations through simulated attacks and vulnerability assessments. And connecting this back to governance, risk, and compliance, they may also be auditory requirements for you to conduct a pen test or an ethical hack on an annual basis for a specific audit that your company is undergoing. So it in turn also helps you meet compliance requirements. Personally, I think ethical hacking is one of those skills that won't be replaced by AI is because it comes down to the techniques and tactics used by the ethical hacker. This includes a lot of thinking outside of the box when it comes to attacks and taking advantage of exploits that you find or even new exploits that are coming up in the wild. And last but not least, I wanted to discuss cross-team collaboration in cybersecurity. Personally, I think this is a skill in of itself because of how important
important it is when you're working in a cybersecurity team all of your goals are typically going to be spread across multiple different projects different initiatives and as a cybersecurity professional you're not just working on the technical side of things your job is also to focus on the collaborative side of things this includes gathering feedback from your stakeholders information sharing between teams which also goes back to threat intelligence shared responsibility and accountability cybersecurity really is everyone's job you could have the most secure environment in the world but one employee may click on a phishing email submit their credentials and an external attacker may have access into your environment cybersecurity is really part of everyone's role and that's why open communication and collaboration from the cybersecurity team is crucial for an organization security. This also goes back to continuous learning and training, where most companies also have compliance requirements around annual security training, annual privacy training, phishing simulation training, as well as any specific cybersecurity trends that may be targeted at your sector. Even things like writing a pen test report and being able to present that in front of a technical and non-technical audience or even a senior leadership team. Verbal and oral communication is honestly just as important as the technical skills that you've used in the pen test itself because if you're not able to explain what you actually did and how development teams can recreate the problem to fix it, then you're not really able to get to any kind of resolution. This along with the fact that if there is a new cybersecurity project or initiative that is implemented, if you didn't collect any feedback from the rest of the organization, there may be some usability issues that you didn't initially think of. Because cybersecurity impacts almost every single team in an organization, with most organizations nowadays being virtual, cybersecurity teams impact everything from the VPN, SSO, or how employees log in to their applications, user access, privacy, new feature reviews and implementation. Cybersecurity teams impact all these things, so you want to make sure that you're able to communicate and collaborate well with other teams in your organization so that you're working with them and not against them. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you again to Udemy for sponsoring today's video. You guys should definitely be sure to check out some of the courses I recommended below. I really do think there's a lot to learn from them, especially with all the changes happening around us with generative AI. Thank you again so much for watching and if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on post notifications if it was helpful to you. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.